Welcome back to CEO Money. I'm Michael Yorba, your host. All right, we've got Ed Butowski, internationally recognized expert in wealth management industry. Ed's known for his unique ability to analyze the current political environment and worldwide current events and explain how it affects investment portfolios. He's been all over the map doing all kinds of stuff. Right now, you're coming to us what, with Chicago, right, Ed? Yeah, that's a mild statement. That's the, <laughs> that's the understatement of the year. <laughs> Okay. All right. Well, look, I got a, I got a bunch of stuff. <laughs> All right, I can tell. I, can, I already know where this is going. White House tariff plans and market reactions. But before we get into it, give our audience just a little flavor for who you are, and then let's drive dive into the stuff we're going to talk about today. Well, so first of all, thanks for having me on. I've kind of gone into a hibernation for a while, but I'm uh, I do a lot of work uh, on Fox. I'm not contributor, but I, uh, on CNBC and C, uh, just about all the talk shows, uh, talking about the market and exactly what you said, taking current events and explaining what they actually mean. I mean we do a great job in the media of just regurgitating and saying things over and over again, but nobody really takes the time to, you know, really dive into what it really mean. So when, you know, you showed me the subject about the White House uh, tariff plan, the market reactions. Move, you know, move right? your mic closer to your mouth so we can hear you. Okay. There. Uh, when, when, you, when you said the White House tariffs and what do they really mean? Yeah. Um, you know, that's exactly what people need to know. I mean, you know, questions like that in, in your show is what more and more people have to talk about. And, um, you know, so having said that, uh, I made a career at Morgan Stanley. I grew up at the high net, running the high net worth group in the Southwest and then uh, get involved with some international things from time to time, uh, speaking at different conferences. And recently, a lot of people have gotten to know me because of a fake story in the news um, related to Seth Rich and WikiLeaks and the President of the United States. And so I'm, I'm that guy that uh, I was on an airplane the other day and someone said, are you that guy? <laughs> I said, I, and I'm like, yeah, I'm that guy. And they're like, he's like, you're that guy. It's, uh, it's amazing how overnight you can have your entire career and life turned upside down by a fake news story. And that's what happened to mine. Yeah, but uh, uh, but that's a, I guess a subject for another show. But you're um, stronger than that, Ed. Oh yeah, no, I'm I'm uh, I'm just trying to figure out how to how to win this game. But you know, I'm, I don't think anybody watches the news with more interest than I do uh, <laughs> because the whole story about me that the president of the United States called me to help him with his hacking into the DNC computer. I mean, can you imagine that if that was a story about you that was completely made up and everyone bought it? Um, yeah. Unbelievable. Even my wife said, my wife said, she says, you barely know how to do anything on a computer. I go, I know. Can you imagine me packing into the DNC computer? Um, but um, but things are, things are going to be fine, and the truth will be out. Uh, one day soon. Yeah, well, it's coming out now on, on our show, too. But now let's get into the stuff, the, the White House tariffs plan. Okay, there's been people on the show that say this is going to cause a depression because there is so much pushback with all of these other countries. I wanted to get your take on it, though. Yeah, well, that's nonsense. Anybody who said that is not well-informed. I mean, a depression is um, a long way uh, from now, if we ever get into one, I mean, things are going to get rough, uh, but, it, but, you know, a depression is certainly nowhere close to where we're going. You know, our tariffs going to and having you know, basically the sanctions and the tariffs, you know, all of that, is that going to impact us? Yes. Is the time of us doing that bad? Yeah. We probably couldn't pick a worse time to have um, uh, the, this tariff war going on because we need so many jobs to create enough revenue to offset our deficit. Now, the number, uh, Michael, just to give you an idea, you, we need about 900,000 new net full-time jobs a month for 12 months just to pay down half of what we're going to be short this year. Right. And last Friday's numbers was in the 100,000, and that wasn't all full-time. In fact, about half of it was full-time. So, you know, we've got enormous problems, and then to couple that with this trade war that is you know being kicked off, uh, things are going to get ugly for a while. 
They, they okay. So we we're, we're on page with that one. Just you're not saying it's going to be a depression, but let me ask. Be afraid of the stock market is your latest podcast off of your website. Give give the audience a feel for what you mean by that. Well, the stock market right now, the way, the way people have to look at stocks is not, you know, it's, it's real simple. You look at the 10-year treasury, and you look at earnings and earnings forecasts. And then you compare that or you overlay that with the growth rate of the company. So if you have a company that's growing at 20%, a price earnings multiple of 20 is acceptable. Well, we have some pretty good numbers that will come out because their earnings estimates have been ratcheted lower over the last couple of uh, uh, quarters by analysts. But even when those numbers come out, they're not going to be close to what the market is selling at. So we're probably at the third highest overvaluation level the country, the stocks have ever been at in our uh, history of the stock market. And it's not, so what's going to get us out of it is either earnings are going to grow tremendously and very quickly, or you're going to see stock prices drop. It's that simple. And stock prices are going to drop. Okay. With that being said, how big of a decline are you thinking that we might end up with before it's all over and we start the, the resumption of another upward trend? Yeah, I, I have no clue. Uh, I really don't. It, it, a lot of it has to do with the ten, A lot of it has to. A lot of it has to do with the ten-year treasury. Mm -hmm. The ten-year treasury really dictates the valuations of uh, companies, and you have to study that. And you get, it would get really boring if we went into it. But when the ten-year treasury rises, the acceptable price to earnings multiple on stocks is lower. So when you see the ten-year treasury down about one point nine or one point eight, the acceptable PE on stocks is much higher. So. Well, do you think the 10-year treasury is going to rise? I do. And when it does, the acceptable valuation on the market will be lower. What about the China? They have a lot of our debt. Do you see that that – I know that that's always the carrot stick thing here when it comes to negotiation, but do you think that they're ever yeah. – I mean, they would hurt themselves if they started dumping our treasuries. Do you think that that's – it's just a bluff or they're real with this? Well, you, you, you say that. I've, I've talked to my friend who's a movie producer – about making a movie um, just about the subject. Um, Jack, the Chinese can do fine just getting rid of our dollars. They don't need our dollar. Um, they don't need anything from us, and it's a real problem. Um, and we can't negotiate as much as we would have had we, do we not have that debt? I mean, how do, how do you, you know, it's like my daughter yelling at me knowing that I could very easily just say no more money. <laughs> she's twenty. She's twenty-two. I mean, how how how's that argument going to go? Right, okay. I'm going I'm to win. All right. What about Russian sanctions and you know their 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 effect on what's going on? Yeah, I, I the Russian market, the economy is not that big, so anything that goes on economically between Russia and the U.S. is really not that significant. We we talk about Russia a lot. But economically, they're not a big deal. Um, you know, China obviously is, Japan is, and other countries are, but Russia just is not. So, um, so the sanctions on Russia, you know, it's it, it, it's good, it's good headlines. You know, and in some cases, it'll impact something. I'm not sure what. Um, but uh, Mitt Romney sure was right, wasn't he? Yeah, he was. Hey, we got to take a break, Ed. Can you hang in there for us? We'll come back on the other side with more. Absolutely. Sure. Right. We'll be right back with Ed Butowski. He is the managing partner, Chapwood Investments, LLC, Ed Butowski, dot, with a Y, dot com. We'll be right back on the other side of this break. You've been listening to CEO Money with Michael Yorba. Catch us on our podcasts everywhere, social media, follow us everywhere. And thanks to all of our listening audience outside of the borders of the United States. Love those cards and letters. We'll be right back. Welcome back to CEO Money. I'm Michael Yorba, your host, Ed Butowski, managing partner, Chapwood Investments, on the show with me now. All right, Ed, uh, when we left off, we were talking about the tariffs, the Russian san sanctions. What about the popularity of cryptocurrency? And uh, my question was really, how is the regulation going to affect this going forward? Any thoughts there? Yeah, hi, I mean, I have a lot of thoughts, and I know you have, um, you know, your audience. Uh, I guess we'll call them big cryptocurrency people, uh, very supportive of it. And I always get 
a lot of hate mail um, when I talk about this stuff. So I'm, I've gotten a lot of hate mail recently on a lot of things I don't need anymore. But I got to tell you, uh, I'm not a fan of cryptocurrencies. And I'm not a believer in it. Um, I believe that um, there's going to be something that comes out of it that might be usable uh, at some point. Um, but I think they'll regulate the hell out of this and make it so it just doesn't come into existence in a big way because for the obvious reason, tax revenue. Okay. And people argue with me and there's young kids and everyone's going to say what an idiot I am. Um, but I got to tell you, I just, I'm just not, I'm not there. I'm just not there, but don't, but that's just me. I mean, Goldman Sachs are taking it seriously. Morgan's taking it seriously. Uh, there's actually you know, funds that are being put together uh, for companies. Uh, so I'm just an outlier in that. Okay. When you say taxing, do you, is, do you think that's just it? They just need to figure out how to get paid on it and then, you know, well, Katie barred the door? Uh it has to be believable, and it, it, it's getting there. You know, every time there's a transaction that's done, you know, there's recognition, and there's sometimes press releases that go out that that transaction was done, you know, through this currency. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, that could very easily just be the beginning of it, and it could work just from that. But you have massive industries and governments uh, that are going to fight this. Um, you know, they're going to fight it a long way. And we have so many of them. It's sort of like the computer industry. When it first came out, where we had the Commodore computer, and then you had hundreds and hundreds of other laptops, and then you know eventually you only had a couple. And that could very well be what happens with cryptocurrencies. Either they use some of the technology in something, um, or it just slowly goes away. And I, I guarantee you, you know, if anyone thought it was cool before the break, they now think I'm not cool. But I just, if I'm going to be looking to put my money anywhere, um, cryptocurrencies is just not going to be a place where serious investors put their money. Okay. What about this Facebook thing and the, and the data privacy that's going on out here? What are, do you have any thoughts yeah. there? Yeah, I mean, that, that's, that's uh, I don't want to call it scary because it was pretty smart on their end, um, you know, to really get to know people. But from our standpoint, uh, you know, that's going back to reading those fine lines that we never do. Mm-hmm. You know, they say, well, we told you it was there. Yeah, that's right. a bunch of nonsense. I mean, it's just like, you know, none of us read that stuff and we should. Um, but, you know, you got 100 billion people who didn't read it. So, you know, the idea that they can come back and say, well, we had it there, um, you know, that's not good enough for me. Um, and I still don't understand it. Maybe you can explain it, but somehow they were trying to get our records from hospitals. I don't know how they could do that. Yeah, that's that, that HIPAA compliance thing is really going to be, they're going to get it in a lot of hot water if that's the case. Yeah. What are you doing now to tell your clients to reduce the risk or how to reduce the risk in the portfolios? I know not every portfolio is the same, but there's got to be some centralized theme, thread, that you're working with. Yeah, so we have done a real good job on the front end with clients of understanding their investment policy um, and what what we need to have them in. Uh, Reducing risk doesn't mean just going to the money market, but having investments that have different risks is really the key. Uh, So, you know, I'm looking at lots of, and we've been buying a lot of single B rated bonds going out about four years, picking up about five and a half, six percent income. Now, that's boring, but when this market starts going down like I expected to, you're going to want to have had some fixed income and maybe overweighted a little bit. On the equity side, uh, we're not on the equity side, but one category that everyone should own, that's managed futures. And when you combine managed futures with some short-term corporate bonds, uh, you're going to reduce the overall risk of the portfolio. And that's how I do it. What do you think about, because I I know somebody else is, is thinking, same way you are, short-term duration on debt instruments, mainly treasuries. But what about the, the private equity money that's just piling up and, and massive amounts of it right there, trying to get into the next unicorn, the next Uber, what have you on that yeah, side? Well, well, they're doing it on the venture side. Uh, there's a lot of money. Uh, they're having a hard time deploying it. Yep. And they are coming up with their uh, unicorns. I mean, unicorns are these companies that truly have 
just a thought or a little bit better than that, and they have valuations of a billion dollars. I mean, I've actually uh, am heavily involved in the VC community, and I talked to some guy the other day, and and he literally said our company we're raising money at 1.2, and I said 1.2, and I said I looked at it, a billion, and I kind of just chuckled. He and he was so serious. He goes, yes. I said, okay, well, you don't have any revenue. <laughs> like, you don't have your prize even to market. How, who, who is going to give you a, a billion two? And they named three other VC firms. And I said, oh, well, I guess they're smarter than me. And I just don't get it. So one of them was Google uh, Ventures, mm-hmm. and another one was uh, Kleiner Perkins. And they're going to give this company a billion two valuation. Any idea what the company does? What industry sector that we were talking about? It was actually way out of my league. Mm-hmm. It was uh, it was cryptocurrency. No, I'm kidding. No, you're right. There you go. <laughs> Sorry about that. Ta-da. But no, it, it, it was involved with. Uh, it was a high tech way of refinancing uh, homes, and there was some way that some company had come up with this really unique technology. I'm sure it's going to work. I'm sure it's going to be great. I'm just not sure it's worth a billion, too. Okay, yeah, so the valuations are getting a little out there. Uh, Doesn't that smell like the Roaring Twenties in the railroads? Well, it's not not quite like that. I mean, if you go back, the best example is the Nifty Fifties, and, Mm -hmm. you know, everyone thought those stocks were overpriced, and you went back and looked at it, there's only one that ended up, you know, looking backwards that was overpriced, and that was uh, Xerox. Um, you know, I went through the, the boom in the 90s uh, where everyone said everything was overpriced and turned out that most of those things weren't overpriced in the long run. Right now, uh, you know, Amazon is not overpriced. It's properly priced based on its earnings. Facebook is not overpriced. LinkedIn isn't overpriced. I mean, those high-tech companies that are leading everything are not overpriced. So they, okay, there's there's the bastage, uh, the the last bastage of a uh, room to grow is that I, I'm wondering about yeah. these these industrial side. The, you think that the industrial stocks or the industrial sector is probably going to take it on the chin here for the short term at least? They they should. Yeah. The, the the growth of the U.S. companies, almost all the growth is coming going to come from outside the U.S. So if you look at you know really any company that makes a widget, they're trying to expand their multiple by selling into Africa, into uh, you know Central America, and, and other countries around Asia. That's where they're going to see their growth. Got it. Ed, um, they're, Ed, not, they're not going to see their growth in the U.S. we got, we got to go, but Ed, come on into the studio next time you're back home from uh, your travels. Okay, I'm sorry for the connection problem. No problem. Ed, All we'll right, talk to you care, soon. Ed. All right, bye. All right, Ed Butowski, Managing Partner, Chapwood Investments. Ed Butowski with a Y dot com is where you can find his latest podcast. We'll be right back with David Williams the other side of this break. <laughs> 